we drove south for about 70 miles. Then we turned east onto a dirt road and followed it until we reached the slopes of the mountains. I parked my car off the road in the depression Don Juan picked because it was deep enough to hide the car from view. From there, we went directly to the top of the low hills, crossing a vast, desolate area. When it got dark, Don Juan selected a place to sleep. He demanded complete silence. The next day, we ate frugally and continued our journey in an easterly direction. The vegetation was no longer desert shrubbery, but thick green mountain bushes and trees. Around mid-afternoon, we climbed to the top of a gigantic bluff of conglomerate rock, which looked like a wall. Don Juan sat down and signaled me to sit down also. This is a place of power. This is the place where warriors were buried a long time ago. At that instant, a crow flew right above us, cawing. Don Juan followed its flight with a fixed gaze. I examined the rock and was wondering how and where the warriors had been buried when he tapped me on the shoulder. Not here, you fool, he said, smiling. Down there. He pointed to the field right below us at the bottom of the bluff, toward the east. He explained that the field in question was surrounded by a natural corral of boulders. From where I was sitting, I saw an area which was perhaps a hundred yards in diameter and which looked like a perfect circle. Thick bushes covered its surface, camouflaging the boulders. I would not have noticed its perfect roundness if Don Juan had not pointed it out to me. He said there were scores of such places scattered in the old world of the Indians. They were not exactly places of power, like certain hills or land formations which were the abodes of spirits, but rather places of enlightenment where one could be taught, where one could find solutions to dilemmas. All you have to do is come here, or spend the night on this rock in order to rearrange your feelings. Are we going to spend the night here? I thought so, but a little crow just told me not to do that. I tried to find out more about the crow, but he hushed me up with an impatient movement of his hand. Look at that circle of boulders. Fix it in your memory, and then some day a crow will lead you to another one of these places. The more perfect its roundness, the greater its power. Are the warrior's bones still buried here? Don Juan made a comical gesture of puzzlement and then smiled broadly. This is not a cemetery. Nobody is buried here. When I said warriors were once buried here, I meant they used to come here to bury themselves for a night, or for two days, or for whatever length of time they needed to. I did not mean dead people's bones are buried here. I'm not concerned with cemeteries. There's no power in them. There is power in the bones of a warrior, though, but they are never in cemeteries. And there is even more power in the bones of a man of knowledge, yet it would be practically impossible to find them. Who was a man of knowledge, Don Juan? Any warrior could become a man of knowledge. As I told you, a warrior is an impeccable hunter that hunts power. If he succeeds in his hunting, he can be a man of knowledge. We slowly worked our way down a perilous path, and when we reached the bottom floor, Don Juan, without stopping at all, led me through the thick chaparral to the middle of the circle. There he used some thick dry branches to sweep a clean spot for us to sit. The spot was also perfectly round. I intended to bury you here all night, but I know now it's not time yet. You don't have the power. I'm only going to bury you for a short while. I became very nervous with the idea of being enclosed and I asked how he planned on burying me. He giggled like a child and began collecting dry branches. He did not let me help him and said I should sit down and wait. He threw the branches he was collecting inside the clean circle. He then made me lie down with my head toward the east, putting my jacket under my head and made a cage around my body. He constructed it by sticking pieces of branches about two and a half feet in length in the soft dirt. The branches, which ended in forks, served as a support for some long sticks that gave the cage a frame and the appearance of an open coffin. He closed the box-like cage by placing small branches and leaves over the long sticks, encasing me from the shoulders down. He let my head stick out with my jacket as a pillow. He then took a thick piece of dry wood and using it as a digging stick, he loosened the dirt around me and covered the cage with it. The frame was so solid and the leaves were so well placed that no dirt came inside. I could move my legs freely and could actually slide in and out. What do they bury themselves for, Don Juan? For enlightenment and for power. I experienced an extremely pleasant feeling of peace and satisfaction. The world at that moment seemed at ease. The quietness was exquisite and at the same time unnerving. I was not accustomed to that kind of silence. I tried to talk, but he hushed me up. After a while, the tranquility of the place affected my mood. I began to think of my life and my personal history and experienced a familiar sensation of sadness and remorse. I told him I did not deserve to be there, that his world was strong and fair and I was weak. 
and that my spirit had been distorted by the circumstances of my life. He laughed and threatened to cover my head with dirt if I kept on talking like that in vain. He said that I was a man, and like any other man, I deserved everything that was a man's lot, joy, pain, sadness, struggle, and that the nature of one's acts was unimportant as long as one acted as a warrior. Lowering his voice to an almost whisper, he said that if I really felt that my spirit was distorted, I should simply fix it, purge it, make it perfect, because there was no other task in our entire lives which was more worthwhile. Not to fix the spirit was to seek death, and that was the same as to seek nothing, since death was going to overtake us regardless of anything. He paused for a long time, and then he said with a tone of profound conviction, to seek the perfection of the warrior spirit is the only task worthy of our manhood. A warrior buries himself in order to find power, not to weep with self-pity. I attempted to explain, but he made me stop with an impatient movement of his head. He said that he had to pull me out of the cage in their hurry because my mood was intolerable, and he said he was afraid that that place would resent my softness and injure me. Self-pity doesn't jive with power. The mood of a warrior calls for control over himself, and, at the same time, it calls for abandoning himself. How can that be? How can he control and abandon himself at the same time? It's a difficult technique. He seemed to deliberate whether or not to continue talking. Twice, he was on the verge of saying something, but he checked himself and smiled. You're not over your sadness yet. You still feel weak, and there's no point in talking about the mood of a warrior now.